Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. And again, welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and uh, Union Avenue in Cleveland. Well, praise our God. We're studying the uh, the Gospel of Luke. Amen. And uh, we can't seem to get out of chapter one. <laughs> we, this is our third lesson in, in chapter one. Amen. Now, last week, uh, we looked at um, the angel Gabriel um, visited Mary. And he told her about uh, the birth of Jesus. And we find that uh, Mary, being a woman of faith, she agreed with the angel and said, uh, you know, she did have a question, how, how will this happen? I, see, I don't know a man. And, and the angel just told her how the um, power of God is going to come upon her and so forth. And anyway, that holy child will be Jesus, be called the Son of God. And, uh, and then he encouraged her faith by telling her about Elizabeth, who was her cousin. She was related to Elizabeth and to how that in her old age, Elizabeth was not only up in age, but she was barren and how that she was going to bear a child. And I believe that helped her faith. And she told the angel, be it done unto me, uh, even as thou said, and the angel departed. And now we see Elizabeth excited about the news that she heard about Mary I mean, about uh, Mary is excited about the news. She heard about Elizabeth. And so she makes haste uh, to the hill country or wherever it was to visit uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias. All right. And that's where our lesson starts from the day. Well, praise God. And so uh, begin reading in Luke chapter one. Begin reading in verse 39. I'm going to read the, those, the first four verses. 39 through 41, okay? Praise our God. Certainly we ask the Father to anoint and to bless this lesson. Father, lift me out of myself. I'm praying that I can be a vessel. I pray that you anoint the word that goes forth. And I'm praying that it brings forth fruit that lasts in Jesus' name. All right. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe in her womb, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Well, praise our God. So, amen. John the Baptist responds, he leaped, the Holy Ghost fell. <laughs> hey, well, <coughs> excuse me. Amen. Well. Amen. All right. So, so Mary was excited about the good news that she heard from the angel about Elizabeth um, having a baby in her old age after having been barren all her child-bearing age. Now, I don't know how much communication she had with Joseph. I mean, she was exposed to be uh, married to Joseph. Joseph. Uh, spousal was something stronger than our engagement. Amen. Uh, has some similarities, but uh, but infidelity would be a, a capital offense. It could be stolen because you were, in fact, considered married. You just hadn't come together yet. You hadn't uh, solemnized that marriage. You hadn't, uh, yeah, you hadn't come together in uh, sexual intimacy. They were living in different households. Um, 
Uh, normally, courtship would take place, you know, maybe a year, year and a half before they came together. So, uh, but she was committed to him, he was committed to her. And so for all practical purpose, she was his husband, uh, she was his wife, he was her husband. So anyway, so well, praise our God. Anyway, and so I don't know how much communication he had with Joseph before she went to see Elizabeth. But I want you to keep in mind, she was going to be there for three months. And when she came back, uh, she was going to be showing. You know, I, I can imagine some of the um, complications that's going to take place around that situation. All right. Well, praise God. All right. So, so the scripture lets us know, amen. So, uh, it lets us know that uh, Mary was excited, so, and, and so uh, when, when uh, 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 Mary walked into that house and greeted Elizabeth, amen, uh, yeah, um, the Bible says the babe leaped and the Holy Ghost fell, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. And, and uh, you know, oh John, John was uh, faithful. Uh, John was rejoicing right then. And Jesus, uh, in the mother's, mother's womb, Mary's womb, walked in. John leaped. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost fell. Praise God. Listen. And, uh, and so, the Bible says that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so I just want to say this, that um, people are struggling with the idea of being filled with the Holy Ghost. But I want to say to you that God wants you to be filled. Amen. And, uh, well, listen, God wants you to be spirit filled. There are many examples where God fill people, and they did not even ask, nor were the signs manifested that many of us expect to see manifested. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost will mess up your theology. I know we want to put God in the box, we want to put the Holy Ghost in the box, but, but, but God will mess up your theology, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tell you, you know, and I can, I can give you some examples where God messed up my theology, you know, uh, just give you a few and it's going to mess up yours, you know, well, you know, I was always taught when I was raised in church of God that believers could not be demonized. Oh, I was told that they could be, uh, what's the word, uh, they could be oppressed, you know, and, and all kind of stuff, but Believers couldn't be demonized, you know? And I know that many scriptures uh, use the word in the King James, uh, um, uh, possess. And I think demonize is a better word because it means that the demon has uh, entered and, and has some control over some area of your life, but, but he don't have control over all areas of your life, you know? And so there are many people who demonize and live in a pretty normal life, but there's an area of their life they need deliverance. Well... Anyway, praise our God. But the Gadarene demon, that boy was possessed, okay? Cutting himself and living in the tombs and all kind of crazy stuff. Anyway, well, listen. Um, so, uh, in my pastorate, a uh, young lady who was doing very good, making progress, um, well, she came to me and began to tell me about uh, how this demon spoke to her. And she wanted to know that I think she was crazy. Uh, and I said, no, no, I, I've been doing some studying and I believe that just what she said, that that demon spoke out of her and that demon needed to be cast out. Now, of course, and that was way uh, different from my theology. Nevertheless, <clears throat> we ended up casting that demon out of this girl. And, uh, uh, and in this encounter, there was never a question about whether she was saved or not. Uh, it was, an, it was a, a, a question about her being free so that she can live a fuller Christian life. Okay? And so, uh, you know, that mess folks the other right away, get theology up. And so, uh, so we found out that uh, a, a, a demon cannot possess the spirit man of a believer, but he may be uh, dwelling in 
the the body or, 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 or the soul. Because I, I believe that man is really a threefold being, spirit, soul, and body. You know, but for a lot of my studies, I just use the thought of man being inward and outward, a twofold being. But that inward man can be further subdivided into spirit, soul, and then, of course, there's the body. And so, so, so that kind of messed me up. And I remember one, one incident in, in, in Africa, of course, I'd, I'd cast out many demons by that time, but, um, um, and there was this beautiful girl, and she was doing a great job leading worship. Uh, I preached on a, 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 the subject of the worldview of Jesus and dealing with, uh, uh, you know, demonic activities and so forth, and uh, how Christ dealt with them, and how, how, what his worldview of, of these kinds of things, and how you approach them, you know? And uh, how it was much different than, than uh, most people. Anyway, uh, I had to catch a plane, but God says, no, I want you to do some ministry. I want you to do some hands-on ministry. So I, 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 that's what I began to do. And the first person I ministered to was this worship leader. But when I laid hands on her, she just fell down and she just screamed, ah, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? So I kneeled beside her and tried to talk to her, but then she went, ah. I'm like, Lord, you know, what's going on? I'm trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, trying to find out what God is telling me and how I should move. Finally, I told uh, them to take her to the pastor's office, and I would deal with her on the end. And so we continued to minister with others. There were people, uh, demons crying out with loud voices and all kind of stuff. Uh, we were breaking curses and, and all kind of things, you know. And again, this was the Spirit of God was just kind of directing me, and I was just kind of moving in the flow, Okay. And, uh, but when I got ready to go, I went to this office and, and to make a long story short, I ended up casting three demons out of this woman. Again, the question was not whether she was saved. The question was, uh, bring her to a place where she can walk in more freedom. Okay. Now I know some folks have a problem with that, but nevertheless, all right, we thank God for that, uh, that young lady. And we thank you for her growth. And uh, we laid hands on her. I had God to, to seal uh, that work. And as we laid hands for God to seal that work, the Spirit of God came on that woman powerfully. Well, anyway, nevertheless, um, God is, is, is at work. And, and I'm saying you can't put God in a straitjacket because he will mess up your theology. So I've been in places more than once where God was moving in a way that's it was nothing compared to what I was taught. And I had to say, whoa, Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to have to put my theology on the shelf because I knew it was God, and uh, I just had to back up. Now, it, it, did it mean my theology totally changed? No, because I, 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 I still believe in some of those same areas, but, but not in quite the same way uh, because God really challenging me on some things, you know, and I, and I can get into some of that, but I'm not, I'm, I'm going to move right on. Well, all I, I'm saying is that God wants you spirit fill, and there are incidents in the Bible, several, where God filled people, they didn't even ask, and, uh, and praise God that we didn't see some of the uh, manifestation that people say you got to see. So I'm just saying, you know, uh, as you move forward, you know, the Holy Spirit might surprise you, okay? Praise God. Now, the Bible did tell us in, in, in Luke, I believe, chapter 11, uh, you know, how much more? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more want you, hold, want you Heavenly Father to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So, so if there's any question, ask, okay? <laughs> Praise God. But then, then how do you know? You see, that's where you, you come back again. I, I submit to you that whatever you receive from God, you need to receive it by faith. And faith is the true evidence. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so there's some things we need to claim by faith. Amen. Now, how God manifests beyond that point, that's up to God. But you need to receive by faith. Because what are you, what are you going to do when things don't feel right? And uh, you, you, you need to be able to know that you know that you know by faith. Uh, well, praise our God. All right. Anyway, all right. And so, uh, so in in Luke chapter one verse forty two. So we found that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, 
And what happened? Spiritual gifts began to operate. And somebody said, are you sure about that? Well, listen. Uh, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say holy boldness was manifested. Holy boldness. She spoke out with a loud voice and she said, blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Now, uh, uh, now she's getting into, uh, someone says, say, a word of knowledge. How, how does she know that? Uh, and she goes in talking about, uh, uh, you know, blessed are thou among women. Uh, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Where did she get this information from? Now, she hadn't talked to Mary. Mary just walked in the door. But here she, are, here she is. Okay, and then verse 43. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? A word of knowledge. How does she know that Mary was the mother of her Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God, she says. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Hallelujah. She understood some things. Listen. And then she goes on and says, For lo, verse 44, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth Waxon. Oh, boy, she's laying it out there. Praise God. All right? So, so holy boldness, prophecy, word of knowledge. <laughs> Amen. And I believe that the Spirit of God, you know, I, I just believe that the Spirit of God was also ministering to Elizabeth, uh, to whatever questions Elizabeth uh, may have had about uh, this uh, unique child that she was carrying. Amen. Well, praise God. And then also, this was good for Mary because Mary needed confirmation. Amen. Uh, praise God. And so uh, when God uh, wants you to do something and give you a clear word, God will confirm it as you move forward. Amen. And you'll become more and more convinced. Okay. Praise God. And so, Mary needed this additional confirmation. Amen. There were many obstacles ahead of her. Amen. And so the scripture says the babe leaped for joy. <laughs> that brother was shouting in that womb. I mean, he, he leaped for joy. Man, it must have been a serious shout of uh, John. I, I want you to get this, and we already talked about it, okay? So, so, uh, so we see the six month. Oh, embryo, leaping, uh, shouting for joy in the presence of a less than two weeks old embryo in Mary. A six-month embryo in Elizabeth leaping and rejoicing uh, at the presence of a less than two-week embryo. <laughs> hey, praise God. And in his, he was, in fact, acknowledging that the embryo of less than a month is life, is alive, okay? <laughs> Praise God. So this scripture proves that life starts at conception. Amen. Well, so, amen. And so uh, I'm not trying to confuse you when I said that uh, Mary, uh, Elizabeth, uh, when she was filled, uh, there were, uh, gifts of the Spirit manifest. So, so because a lot of people really hung up on some kind of manifestation of a gift of the Spirit, okay? And uh, I'm still operating in faith, and uh, and they put the cart before the horse, and they live for signs. There are people who are going from one meeting to another trying to get slain. They don't believe they got anything unless they fall out. <laughs> well, praise God. I remember preaching at a place, where the people had a lot of falling out. And uh, I went and I just preached the word. And one young lady came to me, she said, I am so glad that you came in and preached the word because I am tired of laying on the floor. She wanted some word, okay? So, 
take it forward of me. So now I, all the thing I'm just saying, praise God. What we want is balance, balance, okay? And it's easy to get out of balance if, uh, you know, signs follow believers. Believers are not supposed to follow signs. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Signs follow. Well, praise. Oh, God. Listen, 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 listen. Well, well, well. Amen. So uh, a spirit-filled life is a Holy Spirit-controlled life. And the evidence one is spirit-filled or that he is, has truly received anything from God is faith. Hebrews uh, 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the proof, the title D of things not seen. How do I know? Because God said he can't lie. And I know, as sure as I know my name, that what God has promised, I have received. Okay? Well, praise God. Listen, a changed life, consistently, a changed life, consistent living in obedience is a result of a spirit-filled life. I'm going to repeat that. A changed life, consistent Living in obedience is a result of a spirit-filled life, okay? All right. Now, and then Mary had this song. And so uh, it goes into Mary's song. And so I, I, I'm assuming that uh, Mary was already filled. Uh, the Holy Ghost had overshadowed her. Uh, she was all, all uh, Jesus was already in the womb. But nevertheless, here's Mary magnifying the Lord. The same spirit of God that was in Elizabeth was also in Mary. Praise our God. And so, and so, uh, praise our God. So, so, uh, Mary's song of praise. Amen. Listen, she said, and Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit, she says, hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Praise God. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shewed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Praise God. He hath filled the hunger with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath, he hath opened his servant. Is, he hath opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. And so, amen. But I want you to compare Mary's uh, song of praise with uh, Hannah. You remember Hannah in, in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel? Amen. When God had, had given her a child, she had prayed and travailed, and, and God had given her Samuel. And she uh, said she was going to always lend him to the Lord. And, uh, and she did. She dropped him off to Eli. And he was raised in the temple, became a mighty prophet. Okay? And so, and so uh, Hannah, she was praising God. And it's, it's amazing the, the similarity uh, of these two praises. Now, listen what she said here. Okay? Okay. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, began reading at verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. 
Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumble are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry cease, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich, and he bringeth low and lifteth up. He rises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. <laughs> Amen. Verse 10. Well, praise God. And so uh, it's amazing that the praise of these two uh, godly women. Well, amen. And so I want you to keep in mind, the Bible says that she stayed with Elizabeth three months. And so, so after three months, Mary returned home pregnant and showing. And I want you to know, uh, not only did Joseph have to deal with this issue, but the gossip was going. <laughs> And you know the gossip was going. And, and Mary had to deal with this all of her life. And don't you think for a minute that it was just for a moment. No, I, I can guarantee you that all her life she had to deal with those whispers about, well, you know, uh, and maybe he was born out of wedlock. Well, uh, well, you know, she was pregnant when, you know, I'm telling you how people act, okay? And so uh, so Mary had a, had a lot on her back. Uh, this young girl... She had to trust the Lord. Uh, and so uh, she uh, had to trust God to speak uh, to her, her, her ex-spouse husband. Uh, yeah, uh, and she, she had to trust God to confirm her integrity to Joseph. Now, obviously, Joseph was a man of faith, a man of integrity, a man of self-control, because he did not touch her sexually until Jesus was born. And so not only did the virgin conceive, but a virgin brought forth. And so uh, he's a mighty man of God. But we're going to find out later on how the angel uh, talked to him and, 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 and how he submitted to that angel and, and, and took Mary. Now, uh, uh, some men would still would say, no way. You know, I, I am not going to marry some woman who's pregnant unless it's my baby, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we, we thank God for that young man. Amen. Well, praise God. And so... Uh, and then it goes on, the scripture talks about the actual birth of John the Baptist, okay? Because there's some exciting things going to take place, amen? Uh, verse 57 says, Now Elizabeth full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they call him Zacharias after the name of his father. Now, you realize that Zacharias, you remember, uh, didn't believe God. And the angel smote him. Uh, he was deaf. He couldn't talk. Amen. That was the sign. Amen. And so the brother had been deaf, writing on the pad all this time. And so they wanted to name the child Zacharias. His mother says, not so. Uh, but he should be called John. You know, that was the name the angel gave him. Okay. Praise God. And so they say, well, you know, let, 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 bring, bring a pad. We're going to have to see what his dad says about this. Okay. And uh, anyway, so they said in the, her, there's none in that, of that Kendrick that's called by that name. And they made signs to his father how he should have him called. Verse 6, 3. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is John. And they all marveled. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. And the and fear came on all that dwell around about them. And all these things 
were noised abroad throughout the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord smile on you, shed his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace. Amen.